In this module we will tackle induction and the concepts behind it. Here we have a solenoid connected to a light bulb. A permanent magnet is present and initially at rest and brought close to the solenoid. It passes through the center of the solenoid which appears to make the bulb produce light which suggests that a current has flown through the wire. We notice that the light is not constant but appears to depend on the motion of the magnet. If we examine the magnetic field lines where it indicates the strength of the magnetic field and when the magnetic field is farther apart it produces a bit of light. But when the magnet is almost at the center where the magnetic field lines are much closer the light becomes brighter. But when the magnet stops moving the light bulb shuts off also which suggests that there is no more current flow in the wires. When we reverse the direction of the magnetic field, we see that it also produces current flow as indicated by flashing of the light. This phenomenon is described by Faraday's law which we will discuss in this module. An important concept in understanding about Faraday is the magnetic flux. Recall the magnetic flux which is similar to electric flux and it is related to Gauss law. Where we use a surface where the magnetic field passes through. We consider the magnetic field that is perpendicular to a small area to. Gauss law is written mathematically as shown in equation 1. We can also write this in terms of an integral form when the case requires a non-uniform shape type area as shown by equation 2. We recall that the magnetic flux is maximum when the angle between B and A is 0 and minimum or 0 when B and A are 90 degrees. From the magnetic flux equation we see that the magnetic flux equation shows the dependency on the magnetic field, the area, and the angle between them. From the animation, because of the motion of the magnet it created a change in magnetic flux as it passes through the cross-sectional area of the solenoid. We can also include the speed of the magnet as a factor in changing the magnetic flux. But essentially it is the changes in flux which produces current flow. Here we have a magnetic field pointing outwards and we take an area of different sizes and by changing the area size we see how much field is contained and this causes changes in magnetic flux. The current that has been produced due to changing magnetic flux is called the induced current. We recall, electromotive force or EMF is not a force but an energy per unit charge or voltage an example of an EMF source is a battery. In this case the changing flux is able to create an EMF which acts like a battery having an electric potential difference at the ends of the solenoid. This EMF is called the induced EMF. In the previous module we have shown that a current carrying conductor creates magnetic field and here we have shown that changing magnetic field creates induced current. This is basically the idea of Faraday's law. Faraday's law states that the induced EMF in a closed loop equals the negative of the time rate of change of magnetic flux through the loop. The negative term indicates that it opposes the external magnetic field as a consequence of conservation of energy. Another way of stating this is by Lenz's law which states that the direction of any magnetic induction effect is such as to oppose the cause of the effect. A square conducting loop moves across a magnetic field which is going out of the page. And we determine the direction of the induced current which will produce an internal magnetic field that will oppose the rate of change of magnetic flux or oppose the magnetic effect. When the closed loop enters into the magnetic field there is an increase in magnetic flux. The external magnetic field pointed out of the page then the internal magnetic flux must be going into the page to oppose the magnetic effect. So the direction of the internal magnetic field must go inward on the right side and out of the page on the left side of the wire. Using the right hand rule, the direction of the induced current must be pointing upward in this segment.
the induced magnetic field is moving clockwise to create a magnetic field that will counter the magnetic flux of the external magnetic field. Looking at a different view, we see the internal magnetic field points in the direction opposite to the magnetic field in order to oppose the magnetic effect. When the loop leaves the magnetic field there is a decrease in the magnetic flux and in order to oppose this effect the direction of the current must be oriented in order to increase the magnetic field. Using the right hand rule, the direction of the induced current must be pointing upward in this segment. The induced magnetic field is moving counterclockwise to create a magnetic field that will counter the magnetic flux of the external magnetic field. Looking at a different view, we see the internal magnetic field points in the direction opposite to the magnetic field in order to oppose the magnetic effect. In this case we determine the direction of induced current when the area of the conductor in the presence of a constant magnetic field is decreased. The magnetic flux is reduced suddenly so there is a decrease in magnetic flux which means that we must add the internal magnetic field to oppose this effect. In order to counter the decrease of magnetic flux due to the reduction of the area, the internal magnetic field must help increase inside the loop the total magnetic field. Using the right hand rule, the direction of the induced current must be pointing downward in this segment. The induced current moves in counterclockwise direction to counter the decrease in magnetic field in the loop. In this case we suddenly change the size of the conducting loop by increasing it and determine the direction of the induced current. The magnetic flux here increases when the area of the loop increases and induced current must be oriented to reduce this effect. In order to counter the increase of magnetic flux due to the increase of the area, the internal magnetic field must help decrease the inside of the loop, the total magnetic field. Using the right hand rule, the direction of the induced current must be pointing upward in this segment. The induced current moves in clockwise direction to counter the increase in magnetic field in the loop. In this scenario we change the direction of the magnetic field with respect to the area vector of the loop. For the initial case the magnetic flux is given by the flux equation with an angle phi and for the second case it is at maximum. The change in magnetic flux shows an increase so the direction of the induced current must oppose this effect. In order to counter the increase of magnetic flux due to the change in angle of the magnetic field, the internal magnetic field must help decrease inside the loop the total magnetic field. Using the right hand rule, the direction of the induced current must be pointing upward in this segment. When the magnetic flux is increased due to change in position of the external magnetic field the induced current produced to counter this effect moves in the clockwise direction. In this scenario we change the direction of the magnetic field with respect to the area vector of the loop but in reverse. 
For the initial case the magnetic flux is given by the flux at maximum and in a later period where it is tilted the flux is by some angle the change in magnetic flux shows a decrease so the direction of the induced current must oppose this effect. In order to counter the decrease of magnetic flux due to the change in angle of the magnetic field, the internal magnetic field must help increase inside the loop the total magnetic field. Using the right hand rule, the direction of the induced current must be pointing downward in this segment. When the magnetic flux is decreased due to change in position of the external magnetic field the induced current produced to counter this effect moves in the counterclockwise direction. In this case the source of the external magnetic field moves towards the conducting loop. The magnetic field lines are closer together which indicates greater strength of the magnetic field. This creates an increase of magnetic flux and the induced current must move in order to counter this effect. In order to counter the increase of magnetic flux due to the change in angle of the magnetic field, the internal magnetic field must help decrease inside the loop the total magnetic field. Using the right hand rule, the direction of the induced current must be pointing upward in this segment. When the magnetic flux is increased due to change in position of the external magnetic field the induced current produced to counter this effect moves in the clockwise direction. By now you may already have an idea already on the direction of induced current when the magnetic source is moved in the opposite direction or away from the conducting wire. Faraday's law is written as equation 3. This is also called Faraday's law of induction. The direction of the EMF follows a sign convention and it is based on the rules shown here. First step, define a positive direction for the area vector A. Second, from the direction of A and B the magnetic field, determine the sign of the magnetic flux and its rate of change. Third, determine the sign of the induced EMF or current. If the flux is increasing, the rate of flux is positive hence the induced EMF is negative, if the flux is decreasing, the rate of flux is negative hence the induced EMF is positive. Finally, determine the direction of the induced EMF or current using your right hand. Curl your fingers around the A vector, with your right thumb in the direction of A. If the induced EMF or current in the circuit is positive, it is in the same direction as your curled fingers, if the induced EMF or current is negative, it is in the opposite direction. Step 1 We define a positive direction for the area vector A as shown in the figure. Step 2, from the direction of A and B the magnetic field, we determine the sign of the magnetic flux and its rate of change. For this case the magnetic field moves from low flux to maximum. The flux is positive since we see from our calculations using equation 1. As it progresses it is becoming more positive when the angle is 90 degrees so the rate of change is also positive. Step 3, we determine the sign of the induced EMF or current. Since the flux is increasing, the rate of flux is positive hence the induced EMF is negative as shown in the Faraday's law of induction. Step 4, we determine the direction of the induced EMF or current using your right hand. We curl our fingers around the A vector, with our right thumb in the direction of A. Since the induced EMF or current is negative, it is in the opposite direction. Following the same step as one from the previous scenario but this time we move from high flux to low flux as shown by step 2. Step 2, from the direction of A and B the magnetic field, we determine the sign of the magnetic flux and its rate of change. 
for this case the magnetic field moves from high flux to low flux but not negative value. The flux is still positive despite the decrease in flux since we see from our calculations using equation 1. As it progresses it is becoming less positive when the angle moves away from 90 degrees so the rate of change is negative. In step 3, we determine the sign of the induced EMF or current. Since the flux is decreasing, the rate of change of flux is negative hence the induced EMF is positive as shown in the Faraday's law of induction. In step 4, we determine the direction of the induced EMF or current using your right hand. We curl our fingers around the A vector, with our right thumb in the direction of A. Since the induced EMF or current is positive, it is in the same direction as your four fingers. Following the same step as one from the previous scenario but this time we move from high flux to low flux as shown by step 2. Step 2, from the direction of A and B the magnetic field, we determine the sign of the magnetic flux and its rate of change. For this case the magnetic field moves from high flux to low flux but not negative value. The flux is negative since we see from our calculations using equation 1. Although the magnetic field is increasing, the flux is becoming more negative. As it progresses the flux is becoming more negative when the angle becomes 180 degrees. So the rate of change flux is becoming more negative so it is decreasing. In step 3, we determine the sign of the induced EMF or current. Since the flux is decreasing, rate of flux is negative hence the induced EMF is positive as shown in the Faraday's law of induction. In step 4, we determine the direction of the induced EMF or current using your right hand. We curl our fingers around the A vector, with our right thumb in the direction of A. Since the induced EMF or current is positive, it is in the same direction as your four fingers. Reversing the direction of the negative flux. Step 1, we define a positive direction for the area vector A in step 2, from the direction of A and B the magnetic field, we determine the sign of the magnetic and its rate of change. For this case the magnetic field moves from minimum to higher flux. The flux is still negative since we see from our calculations using equation 1. As it progresses it is just becoming less negative. So the rate of change of flux despite becoming less negative is increasing. In step 3, we determine the sign of the induced EMF or current. Since the flux is decreasing, the rate of flux is positive hence the induced EMF is negative as shown in the Faraday's law of induction. In step 4, we determine the direction of the induced EMF or current using your right hand. We curl our fingers around the A vector, with our right thumb in the direction of A. Since the induced EMF or current is negative, it is in the opposite direction as your four fingers. Here we have a rectangular conducting loop with the induced current and internal magnetic field pointed in these directions. In this scenario, the external magnetic flux is increasing so the rate of this flux is positive. Applying Faraday's law of induction as shown by the equation here. The EMF is negative and follows the right hand rule orientation. Applying the convention for the induced EMF, we see that it is pointed in the same direction as the induced current. Here we have a rectangular conducting loop with the induced current and internal magnetic field pointed in these directions. In this scenario, the external magnetic flux is decreasing so the rate of this flux is negative. Applying Faraday's law of induction as shown by the equation here. The EMF is positive and follows the right hand rule orientation. Applying the convention for the induced EMF, 
we see that it is pointed in the same direction as the induced current. For solenoids having n number of loops Faraday's law of induction is simply multiplied by the factor n as shown by the equation 4. Where we see that an increase of induced EMF is proportional to the number of coils in the solenoid. This is useful in generating high amounts of electricity. Here we have an example. A 500 loop circular coil with a radius of 4 cm is placed between poles of a large electromagnet. The magnetic field is uniform and makes an angle of 60 degrees with the plane of the coil. It decreases to negative 0.2 tesla per second. What is the magnitude and direction of the induced EMF? We refer to the image below and examine the details. We see that the assumed area vector is pointed to the right side near the south pole of the electromagnet. The solenoid is tilted by a 60 degrees angle. This angle is between the external magnetic field and the plane of the loop. We extract the angle phi which is the angle of area vector A and the external magnetic field which is just 90 degrees minus 60 degrees and we get the value of phi which is 30 degrees. We examine the problem and we can extract that the number of coils is 500 and the rate of change of magnetic field is given as negative 0.2 tesla per second. The negative sign indicates that the magnetic flux is decreasing. On the right side we redraw the figure where the area vector is pointed upwards. Now we apply the sign convention to solve this problem. For step 1 where we define a positive direction for the area vector of but for this case it has already been established. For step 2, from the direction of A and B the magnetic field, we determine the sign of the magnetic flux theta B and its rate of change. For this case the rate of flux is dependent on the magnetic field rate. So we solve the rate of change using the rate of magnetic field using equation A. We recall the expression for the magnetic flux in derivative form we have equation 1. The expression for the rate of flux or the derivative form is written as equation B. For step 3, we determine the sign of the induced EMF or current. Since rate of flux is negative hence the induced EMF is positive as shown in the Faraday's law of induction in equation C. Note that this is just for a single loop. Step 4 we determine the direction of the induced EMF or current using your right hand. We curl our fingers around the A vector, with our right thumb in the direction of A. Since the induced EMF or current is positive, it is in the same direction as your four fingers or for this case it is moving counterclockwise. To solve for the magnitude of the induced EMF for a solenoid having 500 loops we use equation 4. It is just multiplied by the number of loops and we get that the induced EMF for the solenoid is about 0.435 volts. Based on the image the direction of the induced EMF for a solenoid having 500 loops is rotating counterclockwise. Here we look at how these EMF originate when considering charges in a conductor rod of length L affected by magnetic forces. The external magnetic field is directed out of the page as indicated by the cross marks and the rod is moving at constant velocity going to the right. A charge in the conductor experiences a force from the magnetic field given as equation 5. Since the velocity is perpendicular then we rewrite it to equation 6. Recall the right hand rule and to determine the direction of the magnetic force we can use another type of right hand rule. First, put the tails of the vector arrow representation of the magnetic field and velocity together. Second, put the base of your palm going in the opposite direction with the magnetic field line. Third, curl your finger to the direction of the velocity pivoting at the tails. And fourth, 
the thumb points the direction of the magnetic force and note that this is perpendicular to the plane where the magnetic field and velocity are. Using the right hand rule we see that the magnetic force is oriented upward. By the nature of cross product, the orientation of the force is perpendicular to the plane where both the magnetic field and velocity lies. Over time there will be an accumulation of positive charge particles at one end and the negative charge particles on the other end. The separation of opposing charges creates an induced electric field and will exert an electric force. The positive charge particle will experience an electric force due to the separation of charges creating an induced electric field and it is given as equation 7. The sum of the forces exerted by both magnetic and the induced electric field is called the Lorentz force and it is given as equation 8. When the opposing force reaches an equilibrium the Lorentz force or total force is zero and it is given as equation 9. The separation of charges creates an electric potential difference which is given as equation 10. We recall that the electric potential difference is proportional to the distance between charges so we write it as equation 11. Substituting the equation for equilibrium we see that we can write it also in terms of the B field as shown here in equation 12. Here we have a slide wire which is composed of a stationary conducting U-shaped metal and a straight rod that is able to move freely in the U-shaped. The straight conducting wire is in contact with the U-shaped wire that allows flow of charges. The slide wire is in the presence of a constant external magnetic field going into the page. As we learned earlier the stationary U-shaped wire will not produce induced current since it is stationary. The straight moving wire will produce electric potential difference due to accumulation of charges on both ends of the wire. The motion of the rod creates an electric potential difference between point A the high potential and point B the low potential. The U-shape rod allows the connection of these two points and a current flows in them. The moving conducting rod has become a source of EMF just like batteries and we write it as equation 13. This type of EMF is called emotional EMF due to the nature it is produced and note that B here is perpendicular to V. That is it for now and I hope you learned something new today. For questions and comments you may send them to diyeslearningstuff at gmail.com. You may review the slide on YouTube at diese at diese learning stuff. Note, please do not forget to use your school email. Also write your complete name and class section. Thank you for listening and see you next module.